Hey YouTubers, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super Speculation Theory video, whatever you want to call it. I am once again joined by Rakurai Network. Man, what is up? How's it going, everyone? Um, I was about to say thank you for having me again. <laughs> I was about to say Don't it. say that! <laughs> <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Anyway, this guy, this guy is super thankful. But anyway, guys, so we're talking today about Frieza. Because, I mean, this is Dragon Ball. Who else do you talk about? But like Goku? Pfft, whatever. <laughs> that, that orange jumpsuit wearing mofo. I don't know. Anyway. Monkey, bro. The thing is, that yeah, orange jumpsuit wearing monkey. No, okay, so episode 99 of Dragon Ball Super, right? I don't necessarily know what they're going to do in episode 100 yet. I don't necessarily know what they're going to do throughout this arc. But can we just agree that, like, Freeze has been shady mm -hmm. this entire arc? I mean, ever since they brought him back, he, like, he just seems to have something up his sleeve. And what do you think? Like, you know, like, can we agree on that? Yes, for sure. Like, he's... People that are saying that Freeze is supposed to be, you know, irredeemable and stuff like that. Oh, trust me, he still is. He still is. <laughs> yeah. And and now we have, in this last episode of Dragon Ball Super, we have him literally sitting there watching the Zenos and like, you know, enjoy your reign while you can, you children. Like, I will... You know, he's like under his breath, really, because, you know, it's Frieza, and he's always afraid of gods just as much as everyone else is. But, you know, even under his breath, he's like sitting there vow vowing revenge. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing here, and I think a lot of the things that even a lot of the people in the community have picked up on is he's planning something. Like Frieza at this point has become a lot more conniving and evil than he ever has been. And a lot of this, I think, is left on Goku's like front door, like his doorstep at his feet. Because Goku's humiliated him so many times. Because at first it was like, I'm so powerful. No one's going to kind of come near me when it comes to my power. I don't even have to train. I don't have to do nothing. Goku comes, rocks his crap on um, Namek, and he he has to be rebuilt. Obviously, Trunks comes, goes and does the same. Kind of annoys him, but at the same time, whatever. So, and then we have him going coming back Goku beats him again <laughs> and he realizes that like oh I had this problem like I was kind of dedicated enough to train but I didn't necessarily fight my own demons so in hell he literally figured out how to utilize his golden power to the best of his own ability he has mastered that power which has to be so incredibly difficult for the amount of power that he's able to push out of that form so this is a guy who has decided and has grown so much since we first met him. I mean, for the most part, he's had more character development <laughs> than, than most people in Dragon Ball at this yeah. point. Like, most people... He, he literally hasn't finished his arc yet, if mm -mm. Super has anything to say about it. Mm -mm. That there's, there is so much more left in Frieza's character. I mean, I, you know, one, one example that I think of off the top of my head, I know you'll agree with me on this... When Beerus first showed up during the Resurrection F movie and in the arc, he was equally as petrified, if not more, in Super. He he was so afraid at that moment. And a lot of people were saying, I don't like that scene because it made Frieza look weak. And it was, it, for me, it showed, like, you know, how, just how powerful Beerus is that even Frieza, of all people, would be afraid of him. But then we see in Dragon Ball Super, he kills all these assassins and stuff. And then Beerus and Whis both show up. And Beerus literally goes right behind Frieza, threatens this man. This man does not even flinch. Does not even flinch. Like, he's so confident in his true golden Frieza form that, oh gosh, he... I, I'm not even gonna, gonna ramble, but th this man has so much... Um, development here and that being the main one that he's not even scared of Beerus anymore or at least visibly yeah I mean like that is an excellent point something that I didn't actually even check cut up uh, I guess even ca catch up on for the most part like something I didn't really even catch but you're absolutely right like he wasn't willing to fuck with Beerus when he came back when he first got his golden form now he gives two shits maybe that has something to do with he's confident in his power maybe it's something that he knows he only has a day to live or any of that stuff but We've seen this, right? And I think someone has said this. I'm sorry, 
sometimes I get so many comments I can't necessarily choose and get a screen cap and be able to put it on the screen. Uh, so like I say in all those videos, if you're watching this video, if you requested this video, make sure I did see the comment, I just didn't save it for safekeeping. Tell me in the comment section below and I will do my best to pin that to the comment section and, and give you credit. But someone pointed out like what is Freeze's role here? Like what is Freeze's, I guess, situation? Like what is his plan and all this other stuff? And I think they said, and I want to kind of emphasize this, you know, before this all began, now he's under his breath talking about Zeno. He's going to overthrow Zeno. But before this all began, he met up with Frost. He's like, you like ruling by power? I like ruling by power. We're going to work together. We're going to be BFFs. Do we just become best friends? He's like, <laughs> you want to do crime with yep. me in the garage? <laughs> <laughs> yup. Actually, I would, love, I would love for them once they get to the arc. They need to do that. Uh, yes. Because they, they did it with, they did it with, uh, they did it with Chris Sabat. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, so anyway, so the thing is, is he, he is sitting there. And he has apparently made this deal with Frost. And I think someone else, like, I, I'm sure a lot of people pointed this out. I just recently watched the episode before we started recording. And I I saw this as well. It's so weird when Frost shows up the way he does and hits Krillin off the ring and then basically just disappears. Obviously, Frost is kind of a, a, kind of a weasel type character like he just cheats at any given point he doesn't want to get knocked off he doesn't want to lose his life or his universe or something like that but why is he being so sneaky we've never seen him be this sneaky before I mean just last time we saw him before that particular point he fought he literally went head to head knowing he'd lose against hit this is a complete 180 for him he literally you know masks himself disappears and he's basically fighting in the shadows at this point and what if frieza yes. and him have struck a deal You're where <laughs> it's like what if frieza and him has struck a deal where he for the most part is getting secret revenge on the universe 7 team and having all of them basically get taken off the ring because frieza knows Frieza has, as you said, has so much, absolutely so much confidence in his golden form, he doesn't think he's going to lose. The one thing he's worried about, because he knows Goku's playing him, they made the they made the deal where if, for the most part, if the universe, uh, you know, if they win, he gets the Earth Dragon Balls. But he knows Goku wouldn't just so easily make that agreement with him in that situation so he knows the only way he's going to get wished back is if he uses the super dragon balls and the only way that happens is if universe 7 wins he's the last person standing so he's the mvp of the team i think he made a deal with frost to take out the universe 7 members secret you know do it stealthily take them out when they're not paying attention so I'm the last man standing. I'll take everyone out myself, mm -hmm. and then it'll be just you and me fighting. And that is why Frieza hasn't turned golden yet because he's yes. not. He wants to trick Frost. Yeah, I. That was. I remember seeing something similar. I can't remember who. Someone said it to me on Twitter, and and if you're watching this video, please give yourself credit in the comments below because I literally I'm trying to remember who you were because I'm not about to take credit for your theory. But, like, um, he said the exact same thing that he feels that, you know, in a way, of all people to knock Krillin off of the stage, it had to be Frost. Like, I even tweeted, I was like, of course it was Frost, are you kidding me? Like, that was the first thing that I said. I was like, Krillin seems to just be completely screwed over by Freezer race people all the freaking time. All the freaking time. And... That first interaction that Frost and Frieza had, because they almost instantly, instantly just started, they found a corner and they just started talking, like, just that quickly. Um, like, that that scene alone, it's something that a lot of people have forgotten about, I think, and it's something that, you know, it could easily be that they're playing something for after the tournament, who knows, who knows, but I know for certain that they wouldn't have put that conversation in there if it wasn't with a purpose. And with how Frieza is, he knows that Goku, like you said, is playing him. He absolutely hates Universe 17 
so much. And I and in the last video that we that we did, I mentioned how Frieza has had this itch to just kill someone this entire time. Like when he met the Universe 7 team and Vegeta made that comment about his halo, he literally like clutches his arm because he, he just knows he has an itch to just freaking kill someone. Like he he he's just ready. Um and on the point of why he hasn't turned golden yet that could be a huge part of it. He may not want Frost to know, like, and I'm going to go a bit further on it, that he may not want Frost to know just how strong he is. Um, I mean, let's think, and this is something that, that popped into my head a few days ago, the fact that if he doesn't go golden, there may not even be any real indication of how strong he is because Frieza wasn't able to detect Goku's power, and he still wasn't able to in the Resurrection F arc. So if... Figuring that these are all Frieza race, I don't know if this would be concurrent within all of them, but if Frost can't read energy either, he would have no idea just how much stronger Frieza is in comparison to Frost. And we don't know if Frost has been trained on his own. We don't know. But just from what we've seen, it could very well be possible that Frieza is not transforming, like you said, in order to eventually trick Frost, make them think that they're on the exact same playing field. And then eventually he goes golden and just betrays him on the spot because I could definitely see any alliance that Frieza has, it's going to just crumble and fall. And who better to take out first than, than you know, the bald one? Who better to take out first? <laughs> he, he probably literally told Frost, hey, you see the bald guy over there in the orange jumpsuit? <laughs> yeah, him first. Him first, fam. He, yeah. and I, he and I have a bit of an explosive relationship. Let's just say that. Like, it could literally, mm -hmm. there could be so many, uh, please, please don't unsub because of that pun, but anyway, <laughs> like, <laughs> that, there's so much possibility here, um, and, it, you know, my whole thing is just being the fact that they can't read energy, so Frost has no idea just how outclassed he is, he thinks that they're on the same level just because they're, just because they seem to have similar ideals, when in reality, Frieza is a snake, they're both snakes. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, it's like, just calm. When no one's watching, when no one's paying attention, just take out people one at a time until the point where, until at least it's, it, it's, I'm the last man standing or I'm not going to, you know, I have the best chance to be the MVP of my team. Mm -hmm. And you you will be as well. Like, honestly, with him, he might be as well because he's been taking out, like, an entire team by himself. So they literally put themselves in the same situation. The last question I have here, though, is what do you think Frieza wishes for? Oh, man. um, That's... Okay, this is going to take me a second, so bear with me here. Um... Frieza has been so so much of a convoluted character throughout this entire arc. Um, as you mentioned earlier, the whole thing about how he's looking at the Zenos and he's saying, I will reign over you someday and things such as that. Um, the fact is, he's such a complicated person that I don't know. I could... There, there are various possibilities here and I'm about to go complete headcanon here, so I apologize in advance. But for one... I could see, for example, I'm not going to go too far deep into this because this warrants an entirely different discussion, but, you know, even though Frieza and Goku absolutely hate each other and that's never going to change, they have this unspoken, like, respect for each other because it's because of Goku that Frieza ever had to train for the first time and just technically because of Goku that he found this true golden Frieza power and in the same light, because of Frieza, Goku went Super Saiyan, you know, means aside... He went Super Saiyan and was able to achieve this further level of power because of Frieza. Um, Frieza harbors such this this like negative intent towards Goku to such a degree that I would not be shot in the slightest if if everyone gets eliminated and either like let's say like maybe they you know in our last video we covered what if they changed the rules for example and at one point we brought up killing. Like, if there was a point, and I, I don't see this happening, so do not attack me in the comments. I'm not saying this would ever happen. But let's say, I, like, just random here, that that Goku just, he's fighting Jiren or something, or he's fighting Hit, and he just gets knocked out cold. I could see Frieza literally wishing this man back simply for the sake of, of him being able to exact his revenge himself. Because he wants that honor on his own to be the one to kill Goku. 
He said it even during their short little sparring match before that he's going to beat Goku one of these days. He said it. He's going to. Whether or not he actually will, it's Goku. He's the protagonist. I doubt he's going to lose. But but Frieza has been talking smack for a very long time. Um, in addition, I could very well see perhaps that, I don't know, maybe he... Maybe he wishes for an even like further level of power that allows him to even come to become stronger than I, this would never happen. But if he if he just asks Super Shamron for this for just a further level of power and he gets so cocky that I mean I could very well see this dude being so freaking cocky that he would he would try and attack Zeno head on. That's just how Frieza is. This man gives no craps whatsoever. This man gives absolutely zero <laughs> craps. Like, like this dude, this dude will literally try and death beam Zeno from from the stage, bro. Like, like this, yeah. this dude has no chill at all. Oh, geez, another bad pun. I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> like I, I, I completely no, I completely agree with you. In fact, I think that if I were to guess what Frieza's wish is going to be. I think he would wish to be like a god of destruction or like a Zeno. I mean, he would go like straight on Jafar with the ideas like I want to be the most powerful thing in po- like in in existence. It would be so cool for him to be like I want to be stronger than Zeno and the wish basically be reverting back on him like it it makes him into something he wants or it traps him into doing something he doesn't want to do or something just so ironic in that sense, but like I think that's what his wish is. I think the whole thing, he's changed his mind. Like I said, he's way more conniving than he ever has been. I think he's gone beyond the concept of wanting to be alive. I think he realizes that there's a a benefit beyond death and beyond life where he can where he can just have the power to rule over everything and not necessarily be alive or dead. He could literally be a god uh, because we've seen and and I, I was just going to make this this point, like one of the things that's keeping him, you know, kind of where he's at, because most people who are evil, unless you're really good, like Goku was, don't get to keep their bodies. Goku said the one reason Fri- Frieza has been here where he is is because his heart is so blackened and he's so unwilling to let go of all this stuff that he is literally torn between two worlds. He cannot move on. That's not the same with gods. Gods we've seen with the Elder Kai and with King Kai, they're literally dead and they don't have to move on. Like they literally get to keep their bodies in the same light. So if Frieza wishes himself to be a god of destruction or at least on that level or on Zeno's level, he doesn't have to come back. At least in my opinion, if he makes himself a deity with one wish, he doesn't have to come back. So so I think, um, not that... Like, that's kind of headcanoning, but I think that that would be pretty cool. Like, just the way he talks under his breath, just the way it seems so inevitable, and he's not necessarily, in my opinion, talking about strength at this point. I think he's made a plan, and I think Frost is part of that plan, and that's why he hasn't, like I said, I think that's why he hasn't transformed. I think that's why he's taking his time, and I think that's why Frost is going around being incredibly incredibly sneaky. Yeah, um, I could... I could see that I've seen the uh, God of Destruction Frieza theory be thrown around here and there, and I like it a lot because it's that would literally put. I mean, even if he became like, even if he ended up going to like a different universe or something to be their God of Destruction, it would literally kind of put Frieza back where he was at the very beginning of the series. Because back when he was he was this conqueror, he destroyed planets, he traded planets, stuff like that. He would judge planets and decide whether or not they're fit to live stuff like that um you know planet vegeta obviously we saw that but that would that would put frieza sort of back in that position where he was before where he was you know literally the emperor of 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 the galaxy pretty much um and if he were if he became a god of destruction that would that was sort of put him back in that position but plus ultra <laughs> like it would yeah. it would like literally like just put that position of power back on him but just to the nth degree as well like it would just mm-hmm. it would i could see it i could see it. i don't know how exactly they would do it but i could see it for sure because that that is so frieza 
Mm -hmm. I completely agree. But anyway, guys, I think we're going to leave it at that. I'm going to link not only Rock Horizon uh, channel in the description section below, which you should definitely go check out when you have time. Uh, definitely, you should have already paused and best gone to look at that anyway. But if you haven't already, please make sure to pause. Go look that up. Uh, one of the things I'm also going to put is a video MJ and I did a while back where we talked about why Frieza makes a lot of sense to be the last villain of Dragon Ball Super. And I think it actually... Based on everything we talked about here, I think this is a video that really kind of draws into that. Like we figured out a way to make that happen in a really interesting, cool way that I'm feeds into that, itself. I'm with y'all on that. By the way, <laughs> I'm with y'all on uh, that. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, I'm gonna put that video as well. I think personally, this is a cool idea for Frieza. What he's planning, what he might be wishing for. Uh, some of the things that Rakurai said as well, pretty awesome as well. Uh, it could be any of those things. I think any of these things would be cool. I want to hear your thoughts and speculations in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to hit that bell over by the subscriber button for notifications every single time I upload. But with that being said, guys, we hope you have a good day. It's been real. Peace out, everyone.